for today's video, we're going to be building a um, dice frequency graph. And that sounds a little bit confusing, so I'll give you a demo. So it asks you to enter the number of rolls. And say we do something like so, it'll actually graph the number of times each roll occurred. And we're actually rolling two dice, and we're outputting the um, sum of the two dice and the number of times those rolls occurred. And this is what we're going to be graphing. And in this video, um, you guys should be getting kind of a grasp, hopefully getting a grasp of how dictionaries work in Python, getting a brief introduction to graphing things in Python. And um, yeah, so let's actually get started with the project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close up everything and I'm going to delete everything that I have here that makes this program run. So as I did previously mention, we're going to be rolling two dice and we want to output the sum of those two dice. So since we're dealing with die, we know that um, dice are random. So in order to deal with that, what we're going to do is we're going to import uh, random. And what we're going to do is from random, we're going to import randint, which is Python's uh, library to, for dealing with random integers. And then we're going to create a function that returns a roll sum of two dice. And what we're going to do is we're going to create one dice, and it's going to be equal to randint. And it's going to be a random integer from 1 to 6, because as you know, typically die have values from 1 to 6 on their six faces. We're going to have another dice called randint. And it's also going to have values from 1 to 6. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and return dice 1 plus dice 2 as that is our roll sum. And we'll go ahead and test this function. And what I'll do is I'll run it a couple of times. So just see what that outputs. Oh, um, I probably have to print roll sum because I'm returning a value, not outputting it. So now if I call this function a couple of times, it should give us a bunch of different values when we roll the die. So as you can see, the first time we roll it, we get a sum of 10, second time a sum of seven, third time, sum of 12, so on, so on, so on. So what I'm going to do now is uh, delete all of this because we don't need to call the function that many times. Um, but now what we need to do is kind of ask the user how many times they want to roll their die. So we're going to do something like um, have a variable called numRolls, and the number of times the user wants to roll is an integer. So we're going to have a, a b of type integer, and we're going to take an input um, please, and we're going to give, give a prompt, enter the number of times you wish to roll the two die. And what we're going to do is that uh, we're going to get in a loop for the number of times that um, the user wants us to roll the die. So for i in range, num rolls, oops, num rolls, why don't we just call the roll sum function and print it out, whatever it returns us. So let's see what that gives us. So it asks us how many times, please enter the number of times you wish to roll the two die. So we can say something like 1,223, and it rolls the die for us that many times. And this is pretty cool, but we really don't know much about the actual rolls that are going on. In the sense, we don't know how many times we've rolled uh, the number 10, for example. So the way we can really keep track of that is kind of store it somewhere. And we could store it in an array or many different options or different variables like, um, like a variable for rolls of 10, rolls of 12, etc. Um, or we could store it in an array. But there is a better tool in Python known as a dictionary. And much like a normal array, dictionaries are very simil similar. So for example, if you have an array and it has values, um, right, something like that, it has indexes 0, 1, and 2. And then what's going on is that if we do something like array of index 0, 
and print it, it would return a value of 464. If we did an array of value one, it would return um, 7,675 7, and so on for the other indexes present. But in associative arrays, or as they're also known, dictionaries, so short form would just be dict, uh, you use curly braces. And instead of having indexes in the order which they come in, you kind of write something like this. So you can have, an, say, an index of one, certain value, a comma to separate to the next item. I'm just going to put an enter just to space this out so you can get a good better idea. So you can have a key of two, another value, key of five, or 56, why not? Another value. And what's happening is that if I wanted to index into the dictionary, I wouldn't index into it like I typically do with an array. So I wouldn't be able to index into spot zero because that doesn't really typically exist in a dictionary. Rather, what exists is spot one. And what that means is this value here or spot two which is this value here, or spot 56, which is this value here, would return the corresponding value which comes after the colon. And just to uh, keep in note as a s idea, you don't have to only have integer values that are your spot holders. You can have strings, you can have floats, you can have whatever you really even want. And that's kind of the beauty of dicks and our dictionaries. And so I'm just a couple of keywords. These spot holders or values as I'm calling or spot holders as I'm calling them are known as keys. And that makes sense because it's a key to access that position in your dictionary. And these values that correspond to the keys are known as items or simply just values. So um, this may seem kind of uh, useless at first, but the reason it is uh, useful is for example, we can keep keys for values ranging from 2 to 12, which correspond to the number of rolls which happen. And we can increment it every time a certain roll happens. And what I mean by that is we can have something like a count variable, which is equal to, um, say, oh, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0 etc all the way up to 12 and what this means is that oh the roll sum of two corresponds to zero rolls as a frequency because it hasn't happened yet and we can continue all the way up to 12. so what i'm going to do is i'm going to very similarly to an array um how you append an item in a dictionary what happens is um if i do something like count dot append a certain value it doesn't work rather what you do is you index into a value and you create a key for example if i did count of index 12 equals to zero it would create a key of value 12 and associate it with a value of zero in this case or 43 or whatever you want and what happens is if this value or, or sorry this key already exists it'll overwrite it and if it doesn't it'll create a new key with the corresponding um, value. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go in a for loop. So for i in range um, 2 all the way to the 13, because our dice only rolls, um, like the least value you can get is one uh, roll of 1 and another roll of 1, and that just returns 2 for our roll sum. And what we're going to do is we're going to do count of index i, which is changing from 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, all the way up to 12, because loops are not inclusive in Python as zero. And then if we go ahead and print count, we could just see what's going on. So you can see um, we have a associative array or dictionary with each uh, corresponding value of zero from two to 12. And what's nice about this is that instead of printing the roll sum, we can index into it and increment the count. So by that I mean is count of index whatever roll sum in um, sorry whatever roll sum returns I can increment by one and then let's go ahead and print the count. 
just to see what's going on. So if I roll 12 times, you can see that certain numbers counts have changed. And what's going on is that I run this however many times I'm stated in my program, and I call the roll sum function. And say on the first instance, the roll sum function returns something like three. Well, what it'll do, it'll index into count of index three, which currently is zero, and increment it by one. So now count of index three is one. And we can keep on doing that as long as roll sum returns a value of three. And What's basically useful about this, or what's kind of going on, as you can see, is we're incrementing the number of times that the um, dice roll frequency happens if a certain roll happens. So this is nice and all, but it is kind of hard to visualize what's going on. So we can go ahead and graph it by using uh, Python's various graphing libraries. So what I'm going to use is matplotlib. So you can do something like from matplotlib import pi plot, which is the way to help you graph stuff as plt, which is just a short form for pi plot. And if you don't have pi plot already installed, what you can do, oh, I'm trying to open my terminal, is you can go ahead and install it. And it's just as simple as doing something like pip install matplotlib. And after you run that command, it'll install it for you. And in my case, I already have it installed, so it is saying requirement satisfied. But if you are running a fresh install, it would actually install it for you. So let me just go ahead and X that out. So um, when you're graphing in with matplotlib and pyplot, what you have to do is actually have an X axis and a Y axis. And in our case, our X axis is all the corresponding keys. So if I were to go ahead and print count again and run this, our, and say we did something like that, our x-axis is the two, the three, the four, the five, the six, the seven, all the way up to 12. And our y-axis, which is our result axis, is three, four, nine, six, seven, zero, nine, eight, four, and so on. So what we can do is we can actually individually um, segregate and get out all of the keys and all of the values into arrays. And how we do that is say, I want to say create a variable called x axis. We can set it equal to whatever count is, but we can fetch the keys by using the dot keys method. And we can do the same thing for y axis. Okay, so my count dot values because now we're fetching the values. If I were to go ahead and print x axis and print y axis, you can see that, um, say I enter that, oh, I spelt it wrong, didn't I? y axis, y axis, okay, let me fix the spelling, axis, axis, or am I spelling axis wrong? Yeah, my spelling is really bad sometimes. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, I was spelling it right before. Yeah, I just had a brain fart there. All right, let's go ahead and fix that y axis. And you can see that it prints the corresponding values, but it has type dict keys and dict values, which we don't want. And the reason that's happening is because the keys keyword or the values keyword is more native to the dictionary data type. So the way we can kind of um, bypass that is just turn it into a list or an array by converting it into type list by just doing this, as you've probably seen many times before. And if we were to go ahead, save and rerun, um, you'll see that uh, it's a list now. Now, if we want to go ahead and graph it, what we can do is um, call plt and mention what type of graph we want. So we can do something like plt.bar for a bar graph, and we just immediately input our two axis values. So we can just do something like x-axis, and then we can do something like y-axis. And, and if I run this now, nothing will happen because I have to explicitly mention to show my actual um, graph. 
So now if I run this and I input a value, oh, I don't know what I just did. Let's just rerun that. You can see that it opens up a graph for us. And this graph is pretty sparse. It doesn't have labels and um, whatnot. So we can just quickly get that done by doing something like plt dot title and uh, we can do something like dice sum rolling frequency and then we can do something like plt dot x label and whatever we want so our x label is our rolls or um, dice sum I guess And our Y label should be um, it should be our dice roll frequency, and then if we were to rerun this and input in something like I don't know, it will actually label everything for us. So as you can see, as just a small side note or a tangent, that this has a really nice conical shape. And the reason for that is um, something known as Gaussian distribution, which happens uh, in a sample set over a large data space. And it's really interesting to see it actually happen within our uh, simulation. So that was just a quick uh, side note. But that's really it for the video. Hopefully you got a quick understanding of how dictionaries work and what dictionaries are, and just a little uh, brief intro uh, to graphing in Python. So um, thank you guys for watching my video and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.